Chiang Mai. There's a different pace here than the hectic city life of Bangkok. It's still a touristy city, and you can run off and do all of those things, which we did, but then we slowed down and stopped rushing. We spent more time with locals, and because this place draws in people from all over the world, we met people we never expected to and created some unforgettable experiences. You can too. Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where Cheryl lives full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. Chiang Mai is the first place we extended our stay longer than a month because it was worth our time to slow down and appreciate where we were and just enjoy the experience more. We have a detailed article on our website that you might want to check out if you're interested in staying longer too. And of course in Chiang Mai we did a lot of touristy things, but we wanted to maybe break out of that and do something a little bit more local. So I went ahead and scheduled a bike tour that was through the countryside. The tour took us through a lot of rural areas and one of the highlights included an elementary school. Both the public and private students are required uniforms and just like in the Thai homes, children had to remove their shoes outside of the classroom and were responsible for cleaning up after themselves at the end of the school day. There are between 20 and 40 students in each class and summer vacation is from March through May. Similar to the US, school runs on Mondays through Fridays and lasts from eight to four. And schools provide free lunches. One of the people on the tour with us was a teacher born in Sri Lanka who spoke excellent English. The Thai teacher let him go in front of the class and teach a little bit about some of the English vocabulary words that they were learning. I think it was a nice diversion from their regular studies. Of course, one of the most special things was when Judy took a picture with the class. How'd you get the sticker, Judy? One of the most precious little girls gave it to me in the classroom, which I will wear with pride. <laughs> so sweet was really special because a lot of the girls were wearing stickers on their faces and whatever, and including me and all of that just sent me over the moon. We made a brief stop at a Buddhist temple. And then we went across the street where there was a few food carts that were cooking sticky rice, fish, barbecued sausages, and some skewered meat, which we got to try a bit of, and it was delicious. Oh, wow. Oh. Come on. All right, barbecue. Some people try it with sticky rice. Nice juicy meat. Mm -hmm. I got some sticky rice. Mm -hmm. Another stop was to meet a farmer who was 79 years old and still working in the fields. He has no equipment, so all the work is done manually and his pension is only 700 Thai baht per month, which breaks down to about $19.59, which really would only support him for less than a week. So he has to keep working. Fortunately, he has built up a customer base, so his customers come to him versus him having to go to the market to sell his food. Unfortunately, his house is for sale and he's only renting it. He's hoping whoever buys it will allow him to continue to work the land because he has no other means of income. Our next stop was a sweet smelling bakery. It's Valentine's Day here, and you can see all the donuts with pink frosting. Unfortunately, this place is also for sale, and there's a very good chance that the buyers will not want to continue with the bakery work, and the staff here will be out of work. They work super long hours. They arrive early in the morning, but at this point at 10 a.m., their baking is done, and they're boxing up the donuts for customers. So, probably not the healthiest thing on our trip today, but awful delicious. And I kind of need the sugar. And mine 
it, it, it's not overly sweet. It looks like kind of a yeast roll. But you can see that there's some cream inside. Mm -hmm. and, and again, even that is not overly sweet, but it's all very light. Yeah, really nice. And it's a good thing that the ovens are off because it was so hot in there without them being on. And this was not the hot part of the season. I can't even imagine what it'd be like in the midsummer. We gained a next level of respect for Thai women on our next stop to see how Kao Lam or bamboo sticky rice is made. It's a many step process and sells for not a lot of money, but it's so tasty. It's a combination of coconut milk, sugar, a pinch of salt. One we had had cinnamon in it and the other had black beans. Both types were really flavorful. I enjoyed the black bean one more. That was my favorite. You can see that the women are working tirelessly all day to chop off some of the exterior of the bamboo, while others are removing the husk after it's been roasted. And before all this, the rice had to be cooked and stuffed and then sealed. And there was one man who was responsible for all the roasting, but the women were the ones with the amazing knife skills and the powerful arm strength. They were my heroes. And inside the bamboo is creamy and flavorful and a little custardy, sweet, but not cloyingly so and very filling. Well, I think the other ones were maybe a little sweeter because of the beans. I don't know, but yeah. I didn't no, think no, they were no. very sweet. Whenever we arrive at a new place, one of the first things we do is try to find a coffee shop where we can start our morning routine. We had a few hits and misses this time when we were looking around Chiang Mai, but then we found Roastery. It's a fantastic coffee shop. Now they have a few locations, so we had our choice, but we settled on one that was fairly close to us, and it also had a sandwich shop with it, which allowed us to have breakfast with our coffee. Mama's Sandwich by Wellas was fantastic and so was this coffee shop because not only were the roastery people friendly they also did some amazing latte art and they knew our order before too long so we didn't even have to tell them what we wanted every day yeah, just the regular and there were two people who regularly worked at mama sandwich one named Tyr and the chef who was named Lin Lin and they were great to us, especially because there were times where I asked to order something off the menu and they were so accommodating every single day. The one day we weren't there, the next day when we came in, they asked if we were going to be there the following day and they said that they had a gift for us. So we've come here nearly every day for an entire month and our uh, servers at Mama's just gave me this beautiful, handmade scented candle with Jean Marie on it. And I just think it's the most precious and thoughtful thing nearly anyone has ever done for me. So it was just so sweet. That's very sweet. I don't know, absolutely precious. They said happy Valentine's Day. Oh, <laughs> But I think they're handing these out to everyone. No, I don't think so. <laughs> There's something special about a morning experience where you kind of go into a place and they know your order, but when they take you to the next level and they know more about you, I don't know, that's, that's above and beyond and really made our mornings feel special. And one of the reasons that we try to go to a consistent place every morning for our coffee is because it's important for us to build connection. We don't want to visit a place and lift right out and not be memorable or not having made any single significant connection. So our breakfast time and coffee is just a great opportunity for that to happen. Yeah, then at the end they said, see you tomorrow. It's like, no, no, <laughs> this time we're not gonna be back tomorrow. We're on to a new country, but yeah, really wonderful. And just around the corner from us was One Nimmin, which has a food court in it and a few other restaurants and other shops. 
The food court was nice because it had a lot of variety of little foods that we could have, and they had a singer, a guitar player usually, that was playing almost every night and two a day sometimes. Yeah, normally we probably wouldn't even be in a food court, but we were definitely attracted to the music and just the low-key vibe. It was an opportunity to try a bunch of different kinds of food and, and just really chill out and hang out and just enjoy the energy of the place. One Nimmin has some dedicated restaurants too. One of these was Ginger Farm Kitchen which we enjoyed a lovely meal there. We really enjoyed that they had local delicious food, but really we were there because of the company. Ironically, we ran into a couple of viewers uh, when we were stuck waiting to open up one of the gates. And it turned out that Brian and his wife, who wasn't there at the time, Corrine, were watchers of our channel. And so we made arrangements to meet up later in our trip and have a nice lunch, and this is where we did it. Brian and Corrine live in Canada, and Brian's originally from the UK, and they were fellow travelers. They were taking an extended trip, so we had a lot to talk about and a lot to share. It was probably one of the nicest ways to spend a day. There are all kinds of sites you can see in Chiang Mai, but taking time and just getting to know fellow travelers is really one of the our favorite things to be doing. Yeah, if you're out traveling and you happen to see us, please say hi, we'd love to share some time with you. And if you don't see us, but you happen to be in the same area as us, go ahead and drop us a note and we'll do everything we can to try to meet up. Before we talk about the four-legged friends we met, we're excited to share that we've started our own absolutely free community forum that we are calling La Familia. You can ask questions about trip planning and all things related to travel there. A video with the details is linked in the description below. One of the bucket list items we wanted to check off while we were here in Thailand was to meet some elephants. And boy, did we ever. Best of all, they put the well-being of the elephants before tourism or entertainment. So it's an enriching experience without harming the elephants. Somebody pointed out that basically any place that has a no touching policy is probably pretty decent. We have an entire episode about our experience at Elephant Nature Park that you'll want to check out next. And a detailed article on our website if you want to know more about our experience, see even more pictures, and learn how to have an ethical elephant experience. Our time in Thailand actually kicked off when we met up with Steph and Chris from 388 Days, fellow YouTubers. If you haven't seen their channel yet, we've got a link below, check it out. At their suggestion, we met up at Kwan's Cookery, which is a very local place, and we had our first taste of cow soy. We also had green curry and rice, tea, and we split spring rolls. But best of all was talking about shared experiences. Because Chiang Mai is such a popular place for tourists to come, and because a lot of YouTubers also do video here, it was really great to be able to meet up and have this shared experience with them and just spend the whole afternoon talking. Chiang Mai is very popular with digital nomads, so you're gonna be able to meet people from all over the world and catch up and make friends and hear one another's experiences. And on the subject of making connections, we had a similar experience on another bike ride that we took to explore the temples of the old city. It was a decent enough tour, but the highlight was when we stopped for coffee afterwards with Annick, who's from a small French island off the coast of mainland France. It was fascinating for us to hear about the various companies she owns, and one of those is as a captain on boat tours, including a boat tour in Thailand, which is what brought her here. Less fun than some of our other activities in Chiang Mai was medical checkups. Now we scheduled Thailand on purpose so we could get these checkups done, and we went to Chiang Mai Ram Hospital and their local clinics to get this all done in a one-week period. Checkup center, is that it? Yep. Anti-aging? Oh, I could use that. <laughs> how, how much anti-aging can they do? <laughs> Roll us back 10 or years or more. We didn't know that they were going to be so efficient, but they were. We basically just went in for some medical checkups. If this is something you're interested in, we have an entire video linked below so you can learn more. If you need help slowing down, make time for the Silver Temple. 
It's located just south of the old city. One of the most striking things about it is it's made entirely of silver, but it also has on its grounds a center for meditation and contemplation. There are meditations and Ask a Monk sessions open to the public that you can join to add some Zen to your life and your travels with some of the eat, pray, love vibe that Thailand is famous for. Had we found it a little bit sooner in our travels, I would definitely have made time to be part of some of the contemplation meditation workshops. Lastly, don't count out building relationships with your Airbnb hosts. It has the potential to be one of the most special relationships you can make while you're traveling somewhere. You're staying in someone's home, you're relying on them for, let's say, local recommendations. And we've found that we've made very special friends with a lot of our Airbnb hosts. One of them in particular, Ananda, was from Cambodia, who also lives part-time in Thailand. And often your Airbnb host is a local, so they'll know the best places to go and the local activities you can get involved in. Especially if you want to be part of some sort of community events that aren't necessarily touristy. Next week, we'll be bringing you a list of more traditional things you can do in Chiang Mai, and there are plenty of them. So don't miss that episode. We hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. And check out FindingGeneary.com, where we have articles, our community forum, and lots more for you to look at. Until next time. Until next time.